Welcome, people and block roomians, to some more Kerbal Space Program mods. Yes, today I've got some more mods. These ones are a bit more kind of like plug in y. Uh, although there are actually a few, uh, I think there's like two extra new parts in this uh, whole showcase. So today I'm going to do three for the main reason of these three like little small ones, but they make a big difference and can vastly improve the game. So uh, the three we've got today are Mechanical Jeb, or Mech Jeb for short. Uh, we then also have Kerbal Alarm Clock, which is really useful. I'll go over that in a bit. And Kerbal Engineer. Um, so, for starters, I'm just going to quickly start off on Kerbal Engineer. Uh, basically what this does is it allows you, it pretty much gives information about the flight. So, if you have the two heads-up displays... It tells you how long you got to your periaps, the exact height of the periaps, the exact height of the apple apps if you have one, uh, the exact time to the apple apps. It's really, really useful, I find, because you know if you don't want to have to sit there and keep opening up the map view just to check your periaps, then literally you can just look there. I, I can then tell. Oh, I've got thirteen thousand. It's live updated, so seventy five burn I don't have to like reset it to find out it'll just tell me exactly it'll just change um, we then also have stuff such as the orbital menus wherever they've gone um, normally they tend to pop up ah there we go uh, so you got all your stuff on here you can edit different sections put different parts on and basically it just gives you a bunch of information and uh, it, that one's really useful but as I said they're mainly just short mods for today uh, although we do have Kerbal Alarm Clock next. Now, I will demonstrate this a little bit later because I've got to do this one first, which is an example of another mod because I only have 45 minutes to do it in. Uh, but this, you can set up alarms for certain things and then you can set what it does. So if we go to add a new alarm, I can set one up at our maneuver node. Now, our maneuver node, I think, is about 45 uh, minutes away. So you can, like, I don't know, set a margin within a certain time. You can set, like, you can set it to do certain stuff. So you can make it just. Do nothing and delete will pass, you know, so you can just have like little reminders on there and then as soon as they're passed they just go, you know, it doesn't say anything. You make it just do nothing so it'll just stay on there and then just go back around. You have message only and uh, no stop war. Basically, this one will just come up with a message, you know, a little bit like an alarm clock or whatever, and then it'll just say, oh, um, whatever you put as the title. So same as if I put in that title, alarm, moon or one, um, moon... Periaps, something, something, something. Yeah, whatever you want to call it, then it'll just pop up as a message. And then you have kill warp and no messages, which means even if you're in full, like, proper time warp, it will actually just kill the time warp and then will tell you, and then you'll get the chance to be able to go back. Now, the reason why this one is really, really, really useful is because with planetary transfers, you don't have to sit there and then manually uh, kind of like line them up. Now, I've got a Mars probe ready. Well, it should have enough to go to Mars. Uh, but nevertheless, I'll be able to show you the mod anyway. But what, what, what will happen is when it gets into the place about 42 degrees, where thereabouts, you know, the right phase angle, it'll then go beep and it'll tell me, curb into Duna, and then I can go onto that spaceship and then I can launch it. Which is really useful. Because you don't have to sit there forgetting stuff. Uh, you then also have kill warp and message. And then you have pause game and message. Uh, oh yeah, you can also make it display no message. But um, basically what, kill, uh, what pause game does, it just literally just completely pauses up your game and then comes up with a message. Uh, same as if there's only something that pops up and then you only have like a minute to do it in. Then that's probably the one you'd want to go. If it's something like a curb into Duna thing, you might just want just to kill your warp and tell you, "Hey, this is happening." Because sometimes you might just kill warp and you might just forget. So uh, there's all sorts of stuff you know from the Apple Apps Paris. There's loads of different stuff uh, that is honestly, I I initially thought I wouldn't need it until I started playing, and then I've realised now that I definitely do need it. Because it's useful, because you don't then miss your deadlines or anything. You can also change the settings so you can style it. Uh, I tend to like it in the Unity style. Uh, you can also add the KSP buttons. Uh, there's also the app button. You can make it like different stuff. So you can make just a basic button uh, on the toolbar if you have that installed, which I don't. And then you can also have the KSP app toolbar, which is up there. Uh, you can like do a certain amount before scrolling. It's basically all this you can just change. So like all the visibilities, uh, specifics, calendars, 
everything like that you can change and then you can also minimize it and then yeah it's basically it just tells you which types uh, they are pretty much which is it's just useful you can also toggle the calendar it tells you how many days uh, in real time it will be uh, so apparently the minute to January 1951 uh, love that kale time. Anyway, if we can minimise that, I'll see. Of course, if you have a lot more, it will actually minimise. I just only have one. And uh, the main part of the show, well, on this rocket anyway, is mechanical jeb or mech jeb. I like to call it mechanical jeb for whatever reason. But uh, there are two ways you can obtain your mechanical jebaniah autopilot system uh, or mech jeb system for short, or just mech jeb or autopilot. Uh, you can either put these little walkie talkies on here or there is a capsule that has a massive eye and has like a weight of 8 tons and that will come with it. In my opinion I much prefer that <laughs> because you can then have your regular capsule along with it. It's really up to you. Uh, so that's what I do. I just have that on like so and then it works. Yo, know, I don't have to do anything then. Um, but here's your little setting down here. Here's your like menu. Here's all your different stuff you can do. So you've got Ascent Guidance. I will show you that when I go to launch a rocket to show off another part. Um, that You can just set to like a certain orbit out, like orbital altitude. So I'd want it to be 80 kilometers, say for instance, like I normally have. It'll then go up to 80 kilometers and make that orbit to the height of 80 kilometers. You can then set certain orbital inclinations. You can make it prevent overheat unless you already know how to fly your rocket and you know that it won't overheat no matter what then you're fine with that. Limited terminal velocity. Now I'd recommend that one because basically for those of you who don't know what terminal velocity is, it's basically when the two equal and opposite forces, you know, well no not equal, when the two opposite forces are, you know, acceleration and drag, you know, when they become equal and opposite then pretty much you just burn it up fuel for no reason from that point until you get high up in the atmosphere. That basically just stops you from losing fuel. So unless you really just want to absolutely bolt it up into the sky and don't care about fuel, or you know just try it, whatever, don't have that on. However, if you are going to do any kind of mission that isn't just bolted up in the sky and hope for the best, have that on. Uh, limit acceleration. I don't normally have these, but uh, you can do that. So you can limit throttles to a certain amount. Uh, force of roll, you can do limit the angle of attack. Uh, you know, I honestly wouldn't recommend limit to angle of attack. Uh, corrective steering, auto stage, I normally don't have that on because I still like to do it myself. Because, like, if some of the rockets I build, I have to wait a bit before I can ditch them because some weird things happen when it starts crashing into it. Uh, you can also have auto warp on, so, like, when you take off, you know when you, there's, there's many ways to get into orbit. But the main one that people tend to do is get your apple up to about 80 kilometers and then wait till you get to the top and then burn. Basically what it'll do is then it'll just auto warp up to there. You know, it'll just warp time on until it's up there and then it'll just still do it itself. Uh, you've got altitude adjuster. That you can just do that little altitude adjustments. Uh, custom window editor. You can like, edit the windows there. Add like certain specific things to do. I normally don't really use that. Docking autopilot. If you choose a uh, like a target to dock with, then MechJeb will then dock the two targets together. Uh, landing guidance. Now this is a useful one. This is one I'll uh, show off in a minute. But you can like set certain landing targets or land it just somewhere, and it will land it for you, which is good. You can also do stuff like deploy down, uh, deploy parachute, uh, parachutes, uh, parachutes. You can also limit stages and that kind of stuff. But that's all right there. Uh, maneuver node editor. You can basically just completely empty your maneuver nodes. Uh, I have one right now. I'm ready to go. And uh, if we press exit, uh, no, execute, sorry, node, and then, yeah, if you place one down and then press execute, it'll then warp over to that node and then it'll actually perform the node itself without you even having to press a button. Now, you can tolerate it to a certain amount of meters per second, so you can say, oh, I want you to, um, you know, not... You know, not bother about it, you know, 5 meters per second either way, whatever. Or you can make it 0, 0.00. Yeah, you can get it, like, insanely accurate. So I might set that to 3 meters per second, and it'll just attempt to stop on the dot. But, you know, if it's, like, 3 meters per second out, then it's fine. So as you can see here, we're just starting to burn. Uh, as I said, 
uh, before. I am using a nuclear... Well, I don't know whether I mentioned it before, but I mentioned it anyway. I do need to have a nuclear engine on, so this could take some time, so I'll be back in a minute. So, now it's finished. Uh, as I said, it will just leave it after a bit, you know, within a certain one. And then it will just kill it afterwards, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, don't worry about that there. Uh, but you don't have to worry about it too much. It's just, it kind of just turns itself off after a while. And then whenever you want to, you know, I know some of want to do this and then push up the periaps a bit. Uh, then you can do that. And then maneuver node editor. And then you can just do execute new nodes. So literally, you don't even have to do your nodes anymore. You can quite literally, and I mean this literally, automate the whole entire flight. Yes, that's a thing now. Uh, which is pretty damn cool, because I don't mind that. But you can do all sorts of stuff. You can uh, like balance the RCS. Uh, you can maneuver planner. Uh, so you can like plan certain maneuvers. So you can uh, do, I don't know, uh, circularize the orbit. And then you can create that node. And then it will do it for you. And then it will circularize the orbit. Or you can, I don't know, uh, we can make it uh, transfer to another planet. Yeah, I would say for instance that, and uh, at the next transfer window, uh, select a target for the interplanetary transfer, so if I set, oh no, not that, uh, if I set Kerbin as a target, how do I set Kerbin as a target, there's, there's like some things, but um, yeah, you can set Kerbin as a target, you can do whatever, and then you can like, transport yourself to it, which is really cool, I like the fact that that's in there. Uh, then of course you have that rendezvous autopilot as I said before you can kind of like plan rendezvous and just make it automatically do the rendezvous uh, You can also make it autopilot you can also do rover autopilot so you can leave your rovers to drive themselves Which is actually quite useful because then there's no errors where you might accidentally pop the tires or break too fast and it kills itself Settings you can set like the certain things so you can make it really compact or you can put it normal how I like it it depends how much space really you want. Uh, then you have smart ass. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm well aware it's ASS. But, you know, this does all sorts of stuff. You can make, like, your mech jab kill the rotation. Uh, make it do all sorts of stuff. Go to the node. Uh, turn on the different modes. You know, all that kind of stuff. It depends what you want to do with it. And then you can do that. Space plane guidance. This is literally a heading control on an aircraft. So pretty much just autopilot. Translation. Different translation controls. There's loads of stuff. You can do stuff like project, prevent jet flame out. There you go. Uh, warp helper. You can well warp some things. There's even flimmin' information on this. So technically, if you get this one, you don't really need Kerbal Engineer. But I just like Kerbal Engineer for the fact that I get these two parts up here. Uh, so you can view your delta V and see how much uh, like potential velocity you have left in your spacecraft. Orbital info. You can find that out. Surface information and vessel information. So at the minute, it's an 18.470 ton uh, ship. I I can't remember how big the lander was, but the lander was quite heavy uh, initially. How do I get that back? Hold on. Ah, oh, whatever. So uh, yeah, let's go do some landing. So with these plugins as well, uh, excluding the Kevin Engine, you can also warp to certain things. The same as if you got. Uh, I don't know, um, a one year, same as it's going to take you one year to get to Jewel or something, and you don't want to accidentally miss it, because we've all done it before, you've put time warp on nice and fast so you get there nice and quick, and then you shoot straight through the planet or you crash into the surface because you went too fast. Well then days are over now, because you can just press the warp to Apple Apps or warp to wherever, uh, it has to be like a little icon for it. But you can basically warp to it, so you won't miss it. I love this, honestly, because the amount of times I've accidentally warped straight through the ground, or warped straight into a planet, and it's really annoying. So there you go, that's the feature, that's a good reason to download. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to save this mod for a later one since it needs this whole episode. But there's a mod called the Keythane mod, and I would say, for instance, want to land somewhere where Keythane is. So let's have a look. Any of these green hexagons have Keythane in it. Oh, well, I'll take it they're hexagons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they are definitely hexagons. Um, but you can do loads of stuff. You can pick a target on the map. So as we want to land... I'm just going to try and pick somewhere nice and flat, so we're going in the crater there! And uh, we can make it do that, so we can make it land at target. 
and then it'll start to do it. And uh, basically, you can make it auto land by itself. Yes, as if this hasn't got crazy enough, it can actually auto land. Flame it now. So, little uh, kind of like options you have with the landing guys, that's why we're waiting for it to do its business. Um, you can basically like set touchdown speeds. Now, I recommend you keep this roughly what it is. Uh, I wouldn't recommend messing around with it too much. But anything like 1.5, uh, I would recommend if you're going to have it a nice safe landing, just having it like 2. Because you don't want it too fast. Uh, so there you go, it's just changing its orbit. Uh, moving to low deorbit burn point. So then it'll just move around. Uh, so you can do lots of stuff. As you see, don't mess with that if you've already said it. That's just like your target area. Do not mess with that. You make it auto warp. Deploy landing gear. If you're going to land on a planet like um, Duna, then you are dev or Lath or something, then you're going to need parachutes. And obviously that's what we are not going to have because we're landing on the moon. So at the minute, the uh, nuclear engine is giving us a nice old thrust. Uh, it's getting us into position nicely. Obviously, uh, mech chip is... I'm guessing it's going to be smart. I'm guessing it's not going to want to possibly land using the nuclear engine. So that's case, I'm going to have to rapidly hit space. But um, yeah, most of, the, most of this anyway, it will do by itself. So I'll meet you in a bit because I'm guessing you're not going to want to sit here and watch us do everything. But uh, it'll just eventually slow itself down and land. Now, a great thing about MechJib, and uh, I need to actually test this, um, but you can actually leave it to run while you go and take screenshots. Same if you're someone who likes to do screenshots. Uh, you know, you can kind of make it take off and, you know, then you can focus on the screenshots or you can make it land and then focus on the planet shots. It basically, it's a good thing because literally, I there's, there's technically no reason to download it because a lot of people could say, yes, it's cheating in a way, but what you've got to remember is that real life rockets most of the time don't normally launch by them like with the actual people so in a Saturn V they didn't literally sit there controlling it and turning it and flicking all the different switches to make it do all the different stuff most of it is actually programmed and the reason for that is because think about it if literally everything's shaking apart you might accidentally press something so, um, there's a good thing for you, you know, it's fairly realistic, especially if you've got satellites. If you've got satellites, then that's even more reason, because, I mean, that's just dead realistic there. So, uh, we're just coming down to this crater. Also, as well, spoiler alert quickly here about an Easter egg. Um, but there are Easter eggs on the moon, and, and several instance, as I said, spoiler alert, the Neil Armstrong one, uh, you can indeed find that. I personally don't know where that one is. I know, though, it is on one of the... I know it's definitely where he landed. Uh, on the Sea of Tranquility. This isn't the Sea of Tranquility. Um, but yeah, it's somewhere. Uh, I think it's on the dark side of the moon at the minute. But basically, you can kind of like use this to land at certain points. So I can say, hey, I want to land here. And then you can land straight on the Armstrong's Memorial. I personally, as I said before, I've said this a million times now. But honestly, I do indeed love this mod, just because I I was a bit like some people. I did actually try it, but it didn't work for me at one point, and I just honestly didn't like it. Because whenever I used it, it would honestly it would just not work. I said it once to the get into orbit, and it actually crashed the rocket. And um, it wasn't because it was like an engineering fault. It was actually one of the ones that Scott Manley recommended to me as an orbital craft. It just generally just crashed into the ground, which wasn't good. So, it is indeed coming down. We are getting very, very close right now. And uh, soon we shall kickstart the engines in, the secondary engines. Uh, as you see, it's now Mechanical Jeb is activating landing legs. And, uh, oh, we're coming down very, very nice and slow now. And... Right. It is therefore... Now decided, now's the time. What the hell is it doing? This is not good. Okay, so right now it's just currently landing. Oh. Oh, look at that. A perfect landing. So disengage auto landing and everything. And there you go. 
Mech Jeb has got you safely down onto the lo uh, loon? The moon? And uh, you're free to do anything. Obviously, as I said, I had the keythane pack installed, so I'm going to go do some mining and uh, refill up these tanks ready for a return trip. But let's get on to the next part. So, the Kerbal Alarm Clock is coming into action here, as you can see, as it is self-slowing warp time down. I'm not touching anything. And uh, in a minute, it should then slow down to one times and should display a message. Here we go. So, um, it says here, Alarm time, year one, day 235 hours, 49 minutes and 41 seconds. Nearing celestial transfer, origin Kerbin, target Duna. Margin, zero days and one minute. Time warp was halted. Uh, so you can delete that on close and then it just nicely cleans up. And then you can go attend to your rocket. Now I'm well aware I've left this running for about 227 odd days. Uh, so Polymus 2, the rocket for Duna, is now 227 days old. However, it is now ready to go on its Kerbin transfer. Which is very good. Because, um, not Kerbin, sorry, Duna. <laughs> But, uh, which is very good, because now we can turn off the alarm clock, because we don't need that anymore. And, Duna is in position. So just to prove you, to you that this does indeed work, look, I would now have a Duna Periaps. And, uh, do you want to know now what we can do with that? Uh, well, obviously, first off, we can fine-tune that to bring it down a little bit. But then we can also then use Mechanical Jeb. To bring it down. Obviously, though, I created this spacecraft maybe before I installed Mechanical Jeb. So I can't use Mech Jeb for this one. But anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoy these three mods. Obviously, you may prefer others to others. You may not want certain ones. It's really up to you. I'm not here to command which ones you have. I'm just here to help you make the right choice. Hopefully. And uh, also help you find out ones that you would like. So anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully, as I said before, you enjoy these mods and, they, and you do indeed actually find them helpful. So, thank you for watching and cheerio.